Hey, everybody. This is Victoria English, top coach with Project 90. Thanks for joining me today. I was having a conversation with a friend recently, and he asked me, what are your favorite things about being alcohol-free? It took me a minute, not to, not because I couldn't think of things, but because so many things came to mind that I had to sift through them for a minute in my head. It was a long list. And we had a great conversation talking about the benefits of living without alcohol. So today, I'm not going to bend your ear that much, but I am going to tell you six of my favorite things that have happened in my life since I stopped drinking. But before we get started, I want to remind you about Project 90. This is our premium program over here at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. We cultivate a really unique community over at Project 90. We work with high performers over the age of 30. And why is that? Well, because being part of a community breeds success. Part of the success of our program, which is at 92%, meaning 92% of the people who come into our program complete 90 days with no alcohol. Part of the reason we have such a high success rate is because we curate this group of like-minded individuals. These are people you're going to relate to on so many different levels. It's not just getting together with a group of strangers who also drink too much. You're going to get one another. And people love that about our program, the community, the coaching, and the accountability. You know, when we're drinking, uh, we don't want accountability, do we? We just kind of want to get away with whatever we want to do. But having this group that you relate to in such a special way makes accountability fun, if you can believe it. So if you fit this demographic, over 30, high performer, driving yourself crazy, trying to get this alcohol thing behind you, then check us out. You can book a call at alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash project 90. That'll bring up a link and you can get hooked up with me or one of our other amazing coaches. It's 15 minutes. It's free. You know, if you don't fit this demographic, um, we've got great news for you because 95% of what we put out in the universe is free and it'll continue to be free. We have the YouTube channel, alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash YouTube. This podcast, thanks for listening. Uh, James is on Twitter. You can find him at Instagram. Um, his handle is at James Swanick for both of those. And if you Google James Swanick and Alcohol Free, you're going to find dozens of articles, newspaper, magazine articles, where he outlines what we do over here in our program. So lots of free resources. But again, if you want this personalized guidance, and you don't want to do this by yourself if you you know you've tried and it hasn't worked then check us out maybe we're a fit i'd love to get to work with you so the best things that have happened since i stopped drinking i am victoria 2.0 and i don't say that to boast i say that because i'm my real self i'm i'm the victoria that was around for a lot of years before alcohol crept in and uh, chipped away at my self-esteem, my self-respect, my authenticity, mm, my problem-solving skills. You know, I'm the old me, but I'm better. And why am I better? Well, because when you put down that drink, you're going to fill it with something. You're going to fill that space in your life with something. And so fill it with good stuff. That's what I did. There were times in my life where I would stop drinking, but I didn't replace it with positive stuff. I spent, actually, to be honest, I spent a lot of that time when I wasn't drinking, thinking about how much I wish I could drink. So imagine a life where you really, really don't want to drink. I would hear that kind of stuff, you guys, and I didn't know if it was real, but I can tell you on this side of, of, alcohol that it is. Uh, but it does take this sort of work that I've been doing now for quite a while, where you get you release the alcohol and you invite in things of your choosing. So for me, those things are, you know, hobbies, uh, doing things I love, 
reading, connecting with people on a really, um, on a very honest and vulnerable level, having those close friendships and, and things like that. Uh, so I've created a life that is full. And so my wine glass doesn't need to be. Okay, I'll be totally honest. One of the reasons you haven't heard me as much on the podcast is because I had COVID a few months ago, and sometimes I am losing my train of thought. So I'm sorry about that. I went on a little walk about there. Uh, what I meant to say is that I don't have to choose anymore. Is today a, a day where I will drink or not drink? Because not drinking is not even a consider. I mean, drinking alcohol is no longer even a consideration. It doesn't even come into my mind of something I'd like to do. So I don't feel deprived. So yeah, Victoria 2.0, I'm more available for my kids, for my friends, for myself. What else? Number two on the top things that happened when I stopped drinking, I lost weight. So if you've heard my story, you might know that my whole life, my whole adult life has been about exercise and nutrition. I studied dietetics. I owned a Pilates studio. I've always been extremely active. Um, It was really part of my identity. And as I moved into my 40s and the drinking became more of a problem, uh, I would increase my workouts in an effort. mm, I was trying to prove a few things. Number one, I was trying to burn off the calories from all that wine. You know, I was doing the math the other day with a member and a bottle of wine has 625 calories. That's if you're drinking five nights a week, which is about what I was doing, that's 3,125 calories a week. In order to gain a pound, you need to ingest an extra 3,500 calories. So just on what I was drinking, I was really tipping the scales onto the heavier side. I'm not drinking those calories anymore, which is huge. Um, So, you know, I've lost weight at a time in my life where women are not typically supposed to easily manage their weight. So when I was drinking, I was in my 40s. It was, uh, I was in perimenopause and boy, the weight was just creeping up. I was never uh, heavy. I was puffy. I was, I think I was a size larger than I am in clothing, but it's not about the size of your pants. It's how you feel. You know, I was working out like crazy, but I still had bloat and thickness to me a fullness in my face that just, it was just pure inflammation and weight. I mean, I was heavier, Um, but no matter what I did, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go away. And of course, as a nutritionist, I knew that it was the alcohol, but I didn't want to face it. I wanted to think I could out nutrition it or out exercise it, but it doesn't work that way. Partly because also of how alcohol affects our metabolism in the way that other other nutrients are stored in our body while our body struggles to metabolize this poison. So alcohol poison and your body recognizes it as such. Therefore, whatever you're eating, much of it gets stored as adipose tissue, fat to be used at a future date. So when I stopped drinking, not only was I in my late forties, uh, is also in menopause, your life where you read so many articles about women and menopause and the, how impossible it is to lose weight. Uh, I eat a balanced diet. I don't deprive myself. I'll have treats when I want them, but because mindfully and, um, I'm not drinking, it is very rare for me to overeat anymore. You know, I don't like munchies. So over time, uh, my weight began to fall back to what it should be for my frame, for my body and my frame and my height. And that's a good feeling because it doesn't, I don't worry about my weight anymore. 
if I go on vacation and I overindulge, then I eat less treats for the next week or so. It's very easy to manage. And that's not something you hear very often from a 51 year old uh, woman in menopause. So yeah, the weight loss, I don't mind that at all. The third thing, my relationships improved. But you know, the first relationship that improved was my relationship with myself. Until you have that, uh, can you really ask others to have a, a healthy relationship with you? It has to start from inside. That's a big aha that I just didn't get for a long time. I wanted healthy relationships. I wanted connection. I wanted um, trust and vulnerability with my children, except I didn't have it with myself. I didn't trust myself. How can you ask someone to trust you, to trust your words, when you are not truthful? I wasn't truthful. I would say, no, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to drink today. And then I would. So I didn't even trust myself. And yet I would expect others to trust me, whether it was about drinking or anything else. So that wasn't very healthy, was it? I wasn't planting seeds for relationships that would flourish. And um, I'll admit it did take some time to get rid of that tired, old <laughs> uh, soil and put in new soil in my relationships. But it has been so worth it. Uh, it's so worth having real authenticity in, in my relationships with myself and with the people I love the most. I, I have a, an inner circle, and that, of course, includes my, my adult children uh, and some close friends, my father. It's not huge. I, I may have had more acquaintances back when I was drinking, but it was because we were all drinking. Those weren't the real relationships that matter. Uh, now the relationships that really, really matter are on track. And that is something that is priceless. If you ask me how much money you'd have to give me for me to trade that, there's not enough, there's not enough money in the world. I wouldn't trade the relationships I have now for anything. That's the most important part. That's the best part. Uh, the next thing, I'm a role model and that feels really good. You know, my actions match my words. I have four children and I would tell them things, what to do, what not to do, but some of those things I was doing. So if you are listening to this and you're a parent, let me ask you a question. How are you going to teach your children about alcohol if you are misusing it? I didn't do a very good job of teaching my kids about alcohol. Not my first three. My youngest one is still young, but I wasn't a good role model back then. In fact, I was more of a model of what not to do, how not to drink. But it's no wonder they didn't listen to me. My actions didn't match my words. So if you're a parent and your teenager comes home drunk, what are you going to do? What are you going to say to them? They're just going to be words if your actions don't match what you're saying. I know that's not fun to hear, but um, I will tell you it's worth it. Being able to be aligned, knowing that your values are reflected in the way that you live. Is, pre is really, really special because parenting is hard. We make mistakes. We're not going to do things perfectly, but knowing that we are uh, at least being the role model that we know we can be brings a lot of peace of mind. And, you know, I'll tell you something else. It's not unusual for members to come into our program and have guilt about the way that they drank, things they said, didn't say the way they behaved. But here's the reality. When you tackle this alcohol thing and put it behind you, you will be a role model, a role model of resilience and grit because alcohol misuse can happen to anybody. You may have heard me on other episodes saying, all you need is a body and a brain. 
and you can develop this issue with drinking. The mark of character is recognizing it, getting help, and putting it behind you. So when someone close to you, whether it's a child or a colleague or a friend or another relative, has an obstacle in their way, if they know what you've overcome, chances are they're they're going to be far more likely to come to you and say, hey, you know what? I'm kind of up against a wall with whatever it is. Could be drinking, but it could be something else. Because they're going to look at you and say, you know what, that's a person who has had struggles, but was able to dig deep and do what was needed to put it behind them. That's the person I want to go to. That person is a role model. So think about that. How would it feel to be a role model, to be an authentic role model and help others get through whatever challenges life throws their way? The next positive thing is I look younger than I am. So I'm turning 52 in a couple of months. uh, And it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, I did an episode the other week on aging and alcohol. And look, we're all aging. Uh, It is a gift. I can say that as a breast cancer survivor, I feel very blessed to be growing older. You know, but the mirror still show reminds me that yes, I am indeed growing older. <laughs> However, I I look healthy. My skin glows um, because I'm not drinking alcohol. My skin doesn't have all that blotchiness anymore. Mm, alcohol is a vasodilator and a vasoconstrictor, so the little blood vessels in our face they they open up. And the blood rushes to the surface and then they constrict and the blood goes away. That contributes to that blotchiness that we get and the puffiness. Um, So yeah, over time, as the alcohol moved out of my system and I I got back into uh, just the healthy lifestyle choices, which I really enjoy, I just, uh, I had a little Benjamin Button going on where um, I do look better than I did in my 40s when I was drinking. Um, And as I said, you know, I am a breast cancer survivor and chemo, radiation, surgeries, all that, that takes a toll on on your face. So that did contribute to some of my aging, but even that has kind of resolved itself as uh, my body's had a chance to recover and heal and I know that uh, not putting alcohol in my in my system has allowed my body to to do what it knows how to do, which is take care of me. So uh, yeah, if you're thinking of spending money on some kind of procedure or another expensive cream, something like that, do yourself a favor, do your wallet a favor and give up drinking for a minute. See what happens. The results really are incredible. Um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> the next thing is confidently being able to say, I am not actively contributing to alcohol is now considered a class one carcinogen. There is no doubt anymore that it has a direct correlation to increased risk of several cancers. It's crazy, isn't it? If it were other another substance, people would be, it'd be all over the place. Don't, don't use this chemical. Don't put this on your skin. Don't eat this. Don't do this. But it kind of has managed to fly under the radar with alcohol. And that's in part due to lobbyists and things like that. But the facts are the facts and you can look it up. Alcohol, class one carcinogen. Uh, as a cancer survivor, I am obviously quite interested in not getting cancer again. And you should be active in your campaign to never get it if you've never had it. And if you have, uh, congrats on surviving. And a great way to contribute to it not coming back is to not drink this poison. So I also know that I'm not putting myself at risk for crazy stuff happening to me. Uh, you read stories about people falling down the stairs. Well, how often does that really happen if you're not drinking? Not saying it can't, right? But 
gosh, when I think about, you know, I live in Colorado, my house has stairs and going up and down steps or um, so many, do you ever wake up with bumps and bruises and gosh, one wrong spill and I could have really, really hurt myself and you can too. And so I know that I'm not doing anything that is going to elevate my risk of something bad happening. Life is random enough. There are enough strange variables out there. And uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I know that I'm looking out for myself and that feels really good. The last thing, and again, I could have gone on and on. The other thing that comes to mind, and again, I could have gone on for hours about this, but I won't bore you with that. But the final thing I'd like to mention is that the rough edges of life don't hurt the way they used to. And that sounds contradictory, doesn't it? Because we drink to soften the sharp edges of life, except it stops working. And it seems like when we wake up the next day, those sharp edges have gotten even sharper and more sharp edges have appeared. Does that make sense? Life still has challenges. I've been through some really difficult things since I stopped drinking. Things that if you had told me about years ago and said, by the way, this is going to happen and you're not going to drink, I probably would have laughed at you and said, okay, yeah, there's no way I'm going through that without numbing. And yet I have, I have. And it's because overall life is gentler and kinder. When you get to the other side of 90 days alcohol-free, you'll have a sense of what I mean with that statement. The world hasn't changed just because I've stopped drinking, but I've changed. And I've changed my small universe in ways which give me a nice soft place to land when life might knock me out, knock me down. It took work, but you know what takes more work? Drinking, staying in this awful cycle of trying to manage it, trying to hide it, trying to figure out when and where and how much and who's going to be around and where will I be and who's going to see me. That was exhausting work. Creating this life that I've created and continue to create is work, but it's joyful work. It's, it's work that I get to do, not work that I have to do like I did back when I was, you know, letting alcohol control my life. So it's get to, I get to do this work. And so, yeah, life, life isn't as sharp and jagged. It's such a better way to go through your days. I invite you to book that call that I talked about at www.alcoholfreelifestyle forward slash project 90 and so many more. I'm not saying life is going to be perfect, but it's going to be so much better. I'd love to walk alongside you on that path. I hope you've enjoyed today. I really love being back chatting at you and with you and cheering you on from this microphone. I hope I get to do it on a Zoom call in our community soon. Until next time, happy summer weekend. Have a great day. Here are five ways I can support you on your health journey. Number one, the Better AF group support. You can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash better AF. That is group virtual coaching to help you to stop drinking. The YouTube channel at alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash YouTube. The book, Alcohol Freedom Formula, can be found at alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. My liver cleanse from my supplements company, Swan Vitality at swanvitality.com. And protect your eyes from screens by wearing a pair of Swanies blue light blocking glasses from my sleep company, Swanic Sleep. You can find that at swanies.com. Catch you on the next one.